In 1998, Toys R Us, the number one toy retailer in the United Dude. States, suddenly fell into second place. The 41-year-old chain had been surpassed by Walmart in the battle for toy supremacy. Toys, toys R Us was finding it increasingly difficult to compete with big box retailers. To to toys R Us. However, Walmart and similar big box stores were not the only cause of the chain's decline. Customers viewed Toys R Us stores as dirty warehouses with no character or charm. Really? On top of this, the management and service at stores was less True. than stellar. Recognizing this, the Toys, Toys R Us board of directors went to ghetto. another toy chain that was known for their quality and class, FAO Schwartz. The famous toy stores were experiences in themselves, and the chain was ingrained That's into sick. popular culture after appearing in the 1988 Tom Hanks film, Big. FAO Schwartz had movie. just the strategy that Toys R Us needed. They don't make stuff like that anymore. So the board of directors no, recruited their chairman, key. John Eiler, to be the next chairman too. and CEO of Toys R Us. To assist him, Eiler brought with him Joanne Newbold, a designer that had helped him construct 25 stores for FAO Schwartz. Of the move, Newbold said, quote, We call it going over to the dark side. Despite the difficult task ahead, Eiler referred to his plan for Toys R Us as mission possible. To improve the reputation of the chain stores, he approved an ambitious redesign that favored visual aesthetics over everything else. In order to improve customer service, Eiler approved wage increases for Toys R Us employees. What? But this was just the beginning. The most ambitious of Eiler's ideas that. was to open a brand new flagship Toys R Us store you, in the crossroads of the world, New York City's Times Square. Wait, there's a giant Toys R Us in New York City? That was lit music. On August 1st, 2000, just months after Eiler had joined Toys R Us, the company announced the construction of the new Times Square location. The space was no. 101,000 square feet split throughout four stories. Damn, the owner of the real four estate, stories? Charles B. Moss Jr., had been holding on to the space throughout a rapid revitalization of Times Square, seeing the area turn from a dirty, seedy tourist trap to a premier shopping district. Damn. Stores like The Gap and Virgin Megastore moved in, and rents began to skyrocket. <laughs> Moss was waiting for the right partner for his real estate, which sat on the corner of Broadway and 44th <coughs> Street. And when Toys R Us made an offer, he accepted it. The resulting Toys R Us would be the largest toy store in the world wow. and the largest retailer in Times Square one-third larger than the Virgin Megastore. The location would cost $35 million to build. <laughs> it was to be the center of the toy universe, according <laughs> to Tyler. Designing Toys R Us's flagship Imagine going there as a kid. store was no easy task. Not only was Newbold designing in some of the most lucrative real estate space in the world, but she was designing far more than just a store. Toys R Us Times Square would be part store, part mall, part theme park, and part event space. Theme the store park. was constructed throughout the fall of 2001, with a grand opening date set for November 17, 2001. On November 14, three days before the grand opening, Toys R Us held its first event. A key aspect of the plans for Toys R Us Times Square was for the space to be a stage for toy manufacturers to hold launch events. The first of these would be for the Xbox, what? with Bill Gates himself present to launch the console and handed out to the first lucky gamer. That's insane. Three days after this, Toys R Us was ready to open to the public. To celebrate the store's opening day, an hour-long character procession was organized. At 9 a.m., over 50 beloved children's characters would walk hand-in-hand -hand from 48th and Broadway to the store. The four-block parade featured That's such crazy. beloved characters as SpongeBob SquarePants, Bert, Ernie, Barbie, Shrek, and Elmo. Shrek! Have been awkward I'm in. considering that there were at least three other Elmos roaming the area at the time. After the parade, the ribbon was cut, with Toys R Us's mascot, Jeffrey the Giraffe, dressed to the nines. The Toys R Us International flagship store was officially open to the public. Wow. As guests approached the store, they were greeted by an impressive video billboard display with 165 panels cycling through various advertisements and interior views of the store. That's As guests dope. entered, they were immediately confronted by Jeffrey the Giraffe, Whoa, that's welcoming creepy. them to the store. The most striking element of Toys R Us Times Square was its main attraction, a 60-foot-tall Ferris wheel, 
which was placed bro, in the Bro, look at the look at the Pokemon one. Charizard, Ash, look at look at uh Tommy Pickles, Jimmy Neutron. And spanned all four stories of the store. The That's Ferris wheel dope. featured the chain's signature backwards R in the center, with 14 themed cars, all featuring famous characters from toys, movies, awesome. television, and more. The cars I'd included the Pokemon a Pokemon one. car, a Tonka truck, a Toy Story car, a Mr. and Mrs. What Potato up, Head car, a Fisher Price car in the shape of a little Snoopy toy a Matchbox fire truck, a spaceship with E.T. on one side and Jeffrey on the other, a Little Tykes car, That's and dope. a Nicktoons car featuring multiple characters, including Jimmy Neutron, Blue, Blue, SpongeBob oh my Squarepants, god, you got to remember Tommy, Blue? Chucky, Why is Tommy Reggie, so big? and Little Bill. Little Bill? The to the oh my Wheels god. Were, according to Newbold, Boys are us, a quote, to... torturous exercise in Bill. design. Newbold admitted that the final result of some of the cars was less than ideal. Yeah, she said that the Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head car specifically looked off, <laughs> and that, to her eye, quote, Mrs. Tate looks way too much like Bette Midler. The licensing agreements for each That's car funny. was for two years, and most of the companies chose to renew the license again and again. Is. However, sometime Looks between like 2001 and Monopoly. 2007, two cars were replaced. The Pokemon car was replaced with a Scooby-Doo car, and Hell the Tonka yeah. truck was replaced with a My Little Pony No car. way! Sometime after this, the, My Little Pony the Barbie's was car design was changed to the Glam Convertible, and Fisher Price replaced their little Snoopy with a school bus. The store's street-level floor Damn. was actually its second floor, and in order to board the Ferris wheel, guests had to take an escalator down to the first floor. Also on this floor were video game displays, an ice cream I'm shop jealous. called Scoops R Us, and a UPS an store. Ice cream the UPS shop. store allowed shoppers to purchase toys and immediately ship them as gifts wow. to friends and family. That's, the third that's floor amazing. featured the majority of the store's retail space. An elevated ceiling was painted yellow, and from it, models were suspended. One depicted Superman saving shoppers from a falling truck. The other was of Spider-Man, swinging sick, from webs dude. above the heads of guests. The third you missed floor out also featured an elaborate here. Lego section. Imagine with sculptures of prominent New York City abandoned. icons. Nearby was the Candyland Candy Store, which brought the famous board game to life. The One of the most popular such a spots on the third floor was a two-story, 4,000 square foot walk-through Barbie wow. Dreamhouse. This what impressive feature Dreamhouse. could only be overshadowed by the third floor's signature attraction, a robotic, 20-foot tall Tyrannosaurus Rex that fuck? moved and roared. This was part of a Jurassic Park display, and the dinosaur Bro, weighed I'm, five I'm tons. During construction, the an entire man. side of the building had to be left play. open to install the creature. Finally, the fourth floor I was know. much smaller in comparison, in order to allow for the high ceilings of most of the third floor. Its main feature was the Pepsi World soda fountain. Also on the fourth floor, off limits to guests, was a boardroom for meetings that had an incredible view of the store and Times Square. Wow. As aforementioned, Newbold and Eiler designed Toys R Us Times Square with built-in stages for toy unveilings. Toys R Us Times Square did hold many product launch events, bringing in big crowds and That's rolling out crazy. celebrity guests. In retrospect, then, some of anymore. these events were quite interesting. And now, some of the product launch events held at Toys R Us Times Square. Or, one of the first times the early 2000s unique visual and cultural aesthetic can be viewed in retrospect. Whoa. Or, oh my god, am I nostalgic for 2003? Yes! Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix with wow. celebrity guest audiobook narrator Jim Dale. The Video Now portable video player wow, is that Hillary Duff? guest Hillary Duff is the music. Riri was there! Musical robot Whoa. thing with celebrity guest Rihanna. Rubik's Revolution with celebrity guest Vanessa Hudgens. Vanessa Dolls from Hudgens. From the TV show Lost with celebrity guest Jorge Garcia. Deal or No Deal merchandise with celebrity Howie guest Howie Mandel. Mandel. Miranda Cosgrove's debut oh album. Oh my Sparks God, Club. bro! Hell yeah, Miranda Cosgrove. With celebrity Stand. guest Miranda Cosgrove. Twilight New Moon merchandise with Twilight? celebrity guests Nikki Reed and Kellen Who's Lutz. That? EA Sports Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2002 with celebrity guest Tiger Woods. The Tamagotchi Connection Virtual Pet with celebrity guest Ryan Cabrera. What the Video fuck? Video now color there. with celebrity guests Hilary Duff again and Tony Hawk. The Damn. store was also used as a location for open auditions for child stage shows such as Dora the Explorer Live and Blue's Clues Live. Actresses, that's as far dope. as design and implementation went, Toys R Us Times Square appeared to be a massive success. However, there were many other factors to consider. The first was rent. The space alone would cost Toys R Us $12 million a year. 
over $100 per square damn. foot. On top of this, the store opened in November of 2001, just over two months bring after the September 11th terrorist attacks. Americans' willingness to travel was greatly impacted wow. by the events, especially travel to New York. Sales in Times Square specifically were down 40%. However, damn. Elliot Whale, general manager of Toys R Us Times Square, said, quote, If the traffic numbers are off in Times Square, we are certainly not feeling it. Toys R Us estimated that their flagship store Crazy. would draw in 20 million visitors a year, two-thirds of the total traffic of Times Square at the time. However, the first year's numbers, in part due to the attacks of September 11th, were reported to be nearly half that, with roughly 10 Damn. million shoppers visiting the store in its first year of operation. Toys R Us Times Square enjoyed them. an eventful existence. In 2003, the store was featured in the Disney television film Eloise at Christmas Time. That same year was the beginning of the wow. flash mob craze that swept the nation for some reason. And nowhere was safe, especially not Toys R Us Times Square. In August of 2003, a large group of people gathered on the store's third floor, not to perform a choreographed dance, but instead to kneel you in front of the T-Rex and scream for a very, very long time. When people used to do this flash mob stuff, they get like on like a platform and they would all just group up and go do something random and freak out a bunch of random people. Every holiday shopping season was a busy, eventful, busy. and sometimes dangerous affair for Toys R Us. On November 27, 2004, at around 3.25 p.m., a rush of holiday shoppers were overwhelmed with pepper what? spray, which was discharged from an unknown person within the store. Three people had to be taken to the hospital, and all 3,000 shoppers were evacuated. By 2004, Toys R Us's hopes of overtaking Walmart had been dashed. When asked whether Toys R Us was still focusing on reclaiming the number one spot, Vice President Ursula Moran responded, no, adding, quote, we are number two. In 2005, Damn! Toys R Us was bought by three investment companies for $6.6 .6 billion. Of this capital, 80% was borrowed. And as a result of the leveraged buyout, <laughs> Toys R Us was now five boring. billion yeah, dollars in debt. Eiler stepped down. Malls from his role. nowadays, like you, in malls, used to be an experience. You used to be like music playing. There used to be like people performing, little acts around, standing around. It used to be like carousel, drinks, rides, everyone's hanging out. Great, great energy. A social aspect to it. Now it's like just like fucking fast fashion. Get your shit. Get out. But CEO after the buyout, and Bunch Toys R Us began really a new, uncertain, bullshit. debt ridden future. On top of all of this, the Times Square location had still not done the fun profit, stuff, none although the Moran said that it was, quote, pretty close to making money. Toys R Us continued to operate the location off of the idea that the prestige and elegance of the location and experience was worth accepting the losses from the store itself. However, this concept Damn. was becoming more difficult to sell, as the corporation as a whole continued to lose market share and close stores across the country. By 2007, alternate revenue streams were considered for the Toys R Us Times Square location, namely children's birthday parties. The store created birthdays wow. packaged for children, including the Dancing Divas Party and the Pirate's Passage Package. In 2009, Toys R Us acquired FAO Schwartz. With the acquisition, Toys R Us now operated the two most famous and popular toy stores in New York City. In 2010, the delicious world of Wonka, the first ever Wonka retail experience, opened on the second floor of Toys R Us Times Square. A short time after this, wow. the space on the fourth floor was replaced with a new attraction, the Arcade. That's dope! Sort of annual tradition at the store for a few years was the anti-war toy protest put on by the Granny Peace Brigade and the Raging Grannies. Two the protest raging groups grannies? composed of old women. Every year, the grannies would the march throughout the store, I know, protesting bro, violent so video dead. games and toys that glorified weapons and war. The first year of the protests, the grannies commandeered the Ferris wheel and waved banners off of it. However, they failed to account for their escape route, and being on the Ferris wheel, it didn't take long for the employees to stop them and promptly escort bro, them out that's of the so store. Cringe. The third year, they decided to switch it up spreading out throughout the store and waiting until a specific time to reveal their granny protest. A grambush, if you will. A Every grambush? Would be rounded up and asked to leave the store. Seems awesome. Where they awesome. would continue their demonstrations on the street. Boomers. Among the unlicensed costumed characters. Bro. On the subject of Times Square street what the sphere, fuck? in 2012, that guy from Dr. in classic Seuss? Times Square fashion, a man dressed in a knockoff Elmo costume was arrested outside of Toys R Us after he began screaming anti-Semitic rants. The man's name? Adam Sandler. 
but not that Adam Sandler. Oh, well, I was about to say. In 2015, Grand Toys R Us was continuing crazy. to struggle with its debt. The company made the decision to close the famous Fifth Avenue FAO Schwartz store in July, citing high Damn. rents. However, the Fifth Avenue FAO Schwartz was not the only casualty of Toys R Us's financial troubles. Because not long after, Toys R Us announced that it would not be renewing its lease on its Times Square location. The rent was set to quadruple, and it was now being marketed for $2,500 per square foot. And it was estimated that Toys R Us's second floor, the street level floor, was worth $42 million a year in rent alone. The massive Jesus. hole in real estate would be filled in part by the Gap and Old Navy, which combined Damn. would fill 60% of the space, with no plans for the remaining 40%. And thus, Toys R Us Times Square, the company's flagship store, and the tentpole of its early 2000s revitalization effort. Bro, was early 2000s ended its run, was lit. And it didn't take long for the autopsies to. Yeah, I feel bad for the kids nowadays. Was that in spite of Toys R Us's like aspirations the, to gain prestige bro, if you grew from up their in flagship the 20, store, the benefits did not plus, outweigh the costs. Fucked. After news was announced that the store was to be closed, thousands of visitors poured into Times Square to ride the Ferris wheel, the see the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the and tour the Barbie Stop. Dream House one final time. Toys R Us Times Square officially closed on December 30th, 2015, after a 14-year run. The interior Damn. was promptly demolished, and construction on wow. the Gap and Old Navy began in early 2017, with the stores debuting to shoppers later that year. In 2018, McDonald's took 7,000 square feet of the remaining space, opening a two-story restaurant. Toys R Us Damn. remained out of Times Square for just 18 months, before the toy chain returned with a new pop-up store for the holiday season. The new store, while much smaller, also featured elaborate toy displays, and in a nod to the original store, a smaller dinosaur robot. The That's store cool. was planned to stay open until the new year, but it lasted a few months longer, continuing its run into 2018. Less than nice. one month after the pop-up location opened, on September 18, 2017, Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy. The company Damn. began liquidating assets, and after a disastrous 2017 holiday season, the chain had no hope of recovering. By May of 2018, That's all so of the crazy. chain's domestic stores had been closed. The brand has seen a small-scale revival effort within the past two years, but as of now, there have been no more ventures into Times Square. Many wondered what became of Toys R Us Times Square's most beloved attractions, such as the dinosaur animatronic. When asked, the president of the it's construction Christmas company Close, tasked with demolishing Toys R Us Times Solar, Square said, quote, The dinosaur? We shredded it and burnt it to pieces. The Superman figure saw a better fate and it would re-emerge on a collector's site with a hefty price tag of $9,800. However, Damn. the best preserved pieces of Toys R Us Times Square would be that of the Ferris wheel, with many of the character cars being transported to Orlando, Florida, where they would become wow. great clothes at Give Kids the World Village. Due to licensing issues, E.T. had to be covered up with a gift bag. Damn. Toys R Us Times Square did not save the company, and it was not a profitable venture. However, it was successful in creating a memorable and beloved location know, for tens dude. of millions Something of shoppers like and this. tourists from all around the it's world. Weird. It was far I more mean, than bro, a store if you or even in this an era, attraction. You ask it for was toys an experience. Either. But it takes a lot more than creative sad. toy displays, a unique location, or even a Ferris wheel to it's elevate a, a store into something more meaningful. It takes people, and the employees of Toys R Us Times Square were given a tall order. They had to endure raging grandmas, pepper sprayers, like, nowadays, flash mobbers, everything is holiday so, shoppers, like, corporate stage parents, like, anti-Semitic Elmos, and millions you know, of more people from all around the world. Like, I remember but going to the, the mall during holiday the team times at Toys R Us when I was Times younger, Square bro, was able to deliver good, a unique and memorable experience to millions. It was like busy, Joanne there was Newbold's Christmas brilliant decorations and design music, would have it never been appreciated like in full without the work of these people many of whom were there from the, the store's opening in 2001 to its closure in 2015. In There's peace, no Toy better Story. summation of the weird, chaotic, and special experience that was Toys R Us Times Square than the one provided by customer service manager Johnny Tamaro on the store's final day of operation. 14 years. That's how long we've been here. That's how long this store has been an amazing place for millions of people from all over the world and all over the country and all over the city. Who else do you know in your life? Bro, everyone else, everyone else standing around is like, yeah, damn, I can't wait to get off. Every, all those employees like paid $750, like, yeah, bro, I just, I'm getting laid off. I gotta find a new job. That either lost their job or their job finished and the whole freaking world knew about it. 
not too many people. We're so famous fires. We're famous fires. <laughs> I have a list of things I want. It's hard, yeah. <laughs> Can't you check the back room? <laughs> Number eight! How do I get out of here? <laughs> Those are things I will not miss. I got a list of things I will miss. <laughs> it's just one word. You. Aww. That's a dope speech. Does it also have a reward? I know, it's a trip. Rest in, rest in place. <laughs> rest in peace, Toys R Us. Man, fuck.